Hey YouTube, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to show you how to make a coaxial cable using compression fittings. There may be a few reasons why you want to make your own coaxial cables. The first reason is you may already have a coaxial cable, but you just want to shorten it up to limit the signal loss. Another reason may be you're trying to fit a coaxial cable through a small opening, like maybe you're setting up a TV antenna and you have a very small opening to to run the wire through your house, and it's a lot easier to run it through on this end than this end. The third reason is maybe you're just a do-it-yourselfer and you just want to make your own cable. Before I show you how to make a cable, I want to mention the importance of using a good quality coaxial cable. A few months ago, I made a video comparing the differences between a cheap cable that you may get from a junk antenna or at Walmart and a decent high quality RG6 quad shield cable. The results truly were night and day, and I had numerous people contact me after watching the video telling me that replacing their cable really improved their TV reception. Chances are if you bought an antenna like this, or you bought a coaxial cable directly from Walmart, the cheapest cable even though it says RG6, it may not be a good quality cable and is probably prone to a lot of signal loss. I attached a link to various recommended coaxial cables in the description of this video if you aren't sure if the cable you're using is decent or not. Assuming you have a decent coaxial cable, you'll need a set of tools in order to put the connectors on the end of the coaxial cable and actually be able to connect it to your TV set. This is a tool set I purchased at Lowe's that I'll be demonstrating in this video. It runs about $40 and comes with a wire cutter, cable stripper, and compression tool. It didn't come with any fittings, but I also found a set on Amazon for about half the price that looks like it should work about the same. Both tool kits, along with some compression fittings for RG6 and RG59, are attached in the description of this video. Once you have everything you need, the first thing you'll want to do is cut the coaxial cable with the wire cutter. I do not recommend using a pair of scissors to cut the coaxial cable, or the cut may not be as clean. A clean cut should look like this, not like this. Next, you're going to put the end of the coaxial cable in the cable stripper. Make sure the end is properly lined up inside the insert. This looks correct. This is not correct. You can see that the cable isn't in all the way to the end of the insert. Once you have it inserted, press down on the top of the stripper so that way the initial cut goes in. You're then going to twist it around a few times in one direction and then a few times in the other direction. Hold both sides of the tool and remove the excess material. You'll then want to peel back the braided shield. If you're using a thick RG6 quad shield cable, there may be an additional outer foil layer that you need to pull back as well. Once you have the shielding wrapped around the outside of the cable, you'll then want to slip on a compression fitting. I found that you may need to push down hard and twist for a good 10 to 15 seconds if you're using a thick RG6 quad shield cable. The fittings don't go on as easy as they do on the dual shield cable because there is a lot of shielding on an RG6 quad shield cable. The fitting should be inserted all the way on the cable to the point that the white insulator lines up with the hole in the middle. You don't want it to look like this. You want it to look like this. Here's a view from the side. You should be able to see the copper coming out. Once the fitting is on, you'll want to insert it into the compression tool. Make sure that the cable is straight and that the inner copper wire lines up with the opening on the one side of the tool. Press down hard and then you're good to go. Now before you X out this video and go, oh, I don't need to listen to what Tyler's going to say next because he already showed me how to put the compression fitting on a coaxial cable. I just have to rewind two or three minutes and that's all that matters in this video. Hear me out what I'm going to say. I highly recommend using a shorter coaxial cable sort of as a test before you do this on a much larger cable just to make sure that you are doing it right. I've been to many antenna setups where I found people put the compression and even crimp fittings on incorrectly to the point that their antenna is not even connected. And I think it's a lot better to realize your mistakes in your house than up on a roof. 
If you end up running into issues the first time, don't give up. Just rewatch my video and see what you may have missed. I have a feeling that many people are going to watch my video way too quickly and just be like, oh, I know what to do. I just gotta do this real quick and then just put this on and oh, it doesn't work. Fake news, I want my money back. Rewatch the video because there are some very important details that I have in terms of putting on the compression fittings properly. If you continue to run into issues, I do offer setup guidance and custom antenna recommendations on my website at antennamanpa.com. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video. If you're on Facebook, like my page at facebook.com forward slash antennamanpa. If you are not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates on upcoming videos I post, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of this video. As always, stay tuned to my channel for more cord cutting and antenna related information and have an awesome day. Thank <laughs> you.